Hey guys, if you've spent any amount of time in uh, the prepper community or just interested in survivalism or preparedness or pretty much anything like that, if I say Bob, you know what I'm talking about. It's a bug out bag. Anyone who's at all interested in preparedness, survival, they know what this is. It, you, whether it's just because you're worried about localized disasters like what's happening in Japan or what happened in Hurricane Katrina, or if you're talking about like end of the world events, shit hit the fan scenarios, economic collapse, one thing that you always need to have to be prepared is something that you can just grab and go and run out of the house and have at least minimum stuff to survive. And so I've always had a bug out bag, just like everybody else. I've had all sorts of crazy gear in it, you know, 50 pound bags or whatever, which I've had to carry that before on, you know, 10 mile ruck marches and stuff, so I know I can do it, but it's not fun. But the, uh, the temptation to put as much gear as possible in there is always there. And one thing that I've realized is that when, when you're talking about the bug out bags, it's just like Ford, Chevy, AKs versus AR-15, something like that. You're always going to get people who say they know exactly what you're supposed to put in it. You're wrong if you don't have this. You're wrong if you do have this other stuff. And, you know, there just, there's, there's a lot of uh, emotion involved in it, too. And so I tried to keep that out of it and focus on exactly what I would really need if a situation arose. arose. And uh, one thing that I came up with is that um, I couldn't nail down exactly what I would need because it's kind of like, and that kind of scared me because I was like, well, wait a second, this isn't the stuff I need if this happened, and this isn't the stuff I need if that happened. And it's kind of like if you ask somebody the question, hey, if, if something crazy happened, like if the shit hit the fan, what would you need? And it's like, well, what kind of uh, you know, scenario are we talking about here? Because it could be completely different. And that's what I realized is that I was filling my bag with a bunch of survival stuff. You know, like I've got gas stoves. I've got uh, a bunch of knives, and I had saws and machetes, and I had the ever-present wilderness survival kit in here, fire starting, snares, signal mirrors, fishing kit, whistles, candles, whatever, and, uh, you know, food, clothes, whatever, the usual, and I realized that depending on what type of scenario I came up with, I w some of this stuff would be completely useless, and in a totally different scenario, it would be life-saving. So I was really stumped because I'm mean, how do I have a, uh, how do I make a bag that can really prepare me that I can just grab and go in all these different scenarios? And I realized that I, you probably can't. If you can't have one bag that you can just carry that's not huge, that can really prepare you for all the different scenarios that you would face. And that kind of stumped me for a while because I was like, man, that, that really puts a damper in my plans. I can't just have a bag that I can grab and go. But at the same time, what I realized is that depending on what the scenario was, the stuff that you would need for that scenario would almost be completely useless in any of the other scenarios, except for a few core things, like, uh, you know, a little bit of water and a way to purify some more, some kind of self-defense, regardless of the situation, things like the uh, every survivalist's favorite item toilet paper. Some of those things you would want to have with you no matter what. But a lot of the other stuff, like a signal mirror, if I got evacuated because of a hurricane and I knew it was a localized event, I know this isn't a hurricane that's covering the entire country, why would I pack my bags with uh, gas stoves, wood saws, a tent, a uh, signal mirror, all this other crazy wilderness survival gear, if I know that I'm not necessarily going to use it, and I'd much rather fill it with, you know, money, extra clothes, you know, stuff like that, more toiletries, stuff that I know I'm going to use if I have to just go stay out of the country. Obviously, you would include your important papers with that, stuff that you wouldn't want to get destroyed. So uh, I, what I did is I basically came up with four specific categories of gear that you would keep in a bug out bag depending on what the scenario was. And based on that, there's very little overlap. So what I've kind of decided to do in the future, this was all from what I had in one bug out bag. What I'm going to do in the future is divide it into three separate bags based on these categories. There's actually four categories, but one of the categories is essential. What I mentioned, some things that you would want to have no matter what. So while even if you were just going out of your uh, city because of a hurricane, you'll ha you want to have w some kind of self-defense with you. In that situation, it would probably just be my primary carry gun, an extra magazine, and maybe a box of 50 rounds. Now, in like an end-of-the-world scenario or something, I'd want to have substantially more self-defense than that. Or in what I call a black evacuation scenario, which I'll describe in a second, I may want to have more ammo than that. 
So, and the essential would be some sort of toiletries, a basic toiletries kit you'd want to have no matter why you were leaving. Even if you go out of town for a business trip, you want to have some sort of toiletries. You're always going to want to have a little bit of water, even in a, in a, especially in a hurricane scenario. Eventually, you'll get out of local area where there'll be some, but locally, all the bottled water and stuff will be gone. If there's burst pipes, you may not be able to trust groundwater. You're always going to have a little bit of water, a little bit of self-defense, a little bit of food, stuff like that. The toilet paper, obviously, those would be essentials, your, your paperwork. That, so that's going to be in a, either a small bag that I can stick in any of the other three bags or a little bit of it in each of the three bags, maybe a modular system. I haven't really decided yet. Now, the other three situations are <clears throat> evacuation, which is the most likely. I'm going to do these in descending order. You've got essential, which you're always going to have in your bag. Any scenario, you're going to need those essential things. Next, you have an evacuation scenario, which I think is the second most likely need or the most likely actual scenario. The essentials are just items. The first scenario is evacuation, whether that's for like what we see in Japan, where, whether it's weather related, whether it's um, localized riots, something like that. The scenario is that you just have to leave your immediate area, your house, your city, maybe even your state, but nothing beyond that. And uh, so you're really, in that situation, you're probably not going to need a lot of the wilderness survival type things. You're going to want basic water purification. You're going to want to have matches or a lighter or something like that. But you don't need the whole survival kit. You don't need tent. You don't need a box of snares. You don't need, you know, all that other stuff. The, the society as a whole in the country is still functioning. It's a localized thing. You just need to get out of your area. There's approaching wildfire. You just need to grab your stuff and go. So you're going to want your money. You're wanting your important papers. Basic self-defense. Basic food and water. But all the other stuff, living off the land, you're not going to need that. I mean, obviously there's scenarios where it may end up that you do, but you can't. The, the bottom line is you can't take everything. So you want to take what you're going to most likely need in this situation. So for an evacuation situation, you have a few changes of clothes, your toiletries, all your important paperwork, all your money, all the stuff that you just need with you in a normal, everyday life scenario, normal society, just outside of your house, outside of your city. And... Um, the second scenario would be what I call a black evacuation, which is maybe like some sort of a foreign invasion or a martial law situation or the government's coming after gun owners or they're trying to, you know, it's, it's not that likely, but it's, uh, it could, it's still possible. In, the, in that situation, you still wouldn't need most of the wilderness survival things, but you would want more self-defense. You would want more untraceable money, you know, more cash, more silver, stuff that you that couldn't tra track you with. Maybe a, um, a prepaid cell phone that wasn't linked to you in any way. Maybe stuff like, you know, a lock picking set that you know how to use. Stuff that you would be able to operate sort of on the lam if you had to be, you know, if, uh, if you know if it became illegal to have weapons or, you know, if they le uh, it made firearms illegal or started coming after people for whatever reason, you know. If just, you know, and you can come up with any scenario, but the scenario basically is still that society as a whole is still functional. There's still infrastructure. There's still electricity for the most part. Maybe localized problems, but you just need to get out and live, you know, undercover basically. So you may even want to include some kind of disguise stuff in that, a bulletproof vest, more ammo and stuff than you would a few changes of clothes, but you still not, as long as you have the cash and stuff, you're not going to need a lot of the wilderness survival stuff, you're not going to need a lot of the extra clothes and extra food, you can stuff it more with uh, the supplies that you would need for that scenario. And the third scenario is a survival, wilderness survival situation. For some reason, whether it's like an EMP, knocked out infrastructure in the entire country, a massive, you know, just some sort of a crazy event where you're going to have to actually live off the land as opposed to um, any existing infrastructure. If you need, just need to be able to run out into the woods and survive for an indefinite amount of time, that's when you're going to want to bring as much food and water as possible. You know, you're going to go lighter on the stuff like extra clothes because you can wear your ratty-ass clothes for a few weeks if you have to. You know, you want a couple changes of socks and underwears, maybe an extra pair of pants and gloves, depending on the weather and stuff, where you want poncho or whatever, but... You're not going to want to bring a lot of just like extra change of clothes, you know, stuff that doesn't really matter if you're just living in the woods. But what you, there's going to be a premium on the stuff like the saws, the snares, the survival equipment, water purification, shelter, cooking, you know, solar power or crank flashlights, stuff like that, stuff for wilderness survival. So I think what I'm going to do from here on out is to make those three separate bags. 
and I'm probably four because the essential bag I will grab no matter what. And if I can only grab one thing, that's what it will be. And then I will grab one of the other three bags depending on what the scenario is. And if it's multiple, then I can grab multiple bags. I may make them smaller so I can stuff them into a larger duffel bag. Or if I can, I'll just throw them in a vehicle if I'm taking a vehicle or I'll just run off with them in my hands. And uh, that way... If uh, you can maximize a bag for a particular scenario, so you don't have, you can get as much of the stuff that you'll need for that scenario, and get rid of the stuff that you're not going to need. Because it would be stupid to run out of your house, grab your bug out bag, and head to a shelter like in Katrina in, the, in a Superdome or a stadium, you know, two hours away from your house, and all you're pulling out of your bag is a handsaw, a tent, you know, a survival kit, all this other stuff that is useless to you there. It, it, some, and this would become life-saving in another scenario, but in this scenario, it's useless. So you really want to defi define for yourself what the most likely scenario is that you're going to use your bag for and tailor it to that. And if you come up with multiple scenarios, then I think you need to come up with multiple bags. That's not crazy. I think that's the best way to do it. Because otherwise, it's like trying to come up with the perfect vehicle depending on where you need to go. If you, go off, if you need to go off-road, some vehicles are going to be completely useless. But if you have to go as quickly as possible or in a chase scenario, a four wheel or you know, a four wheel drive monster truck is gonna perform poorly. You know, maybe you want a street bike or something like that. So it's the same thing that applies. You need to figure out what you need and figure out how to meet those needs in separate situations. I don't think a hybrid bag is the best way to do it because it will just end up being poorly equipped for all the scenarios. You'll have a little bit of what you need and most of the stuff will be useless to you. So I think it's better to make different bags or a modular system that you can stack together and grab the rest if you have time or if you really have space or if you can't take your vehicle. So that's my bug out bag philosophy. I'll get back with you guys in a little bit later about once I complete these actual bag or bags and show you what I'm talking about and exactly what I have in each one of them because I've got some pretty cool stuff, some good ideas for each scenario. So let me know what you think about that um, setup. Let me know what your bug out, ba excuse me, bug out bag philosophy is and what you keep in yours and how you plan on meeting those, the different scenarios that you may encounter that have entirely different uh, needs in terms of what you would need with you. So I uh, hope that's interesting to you guys. Rate, comment, and subscribe, and I will talk to you guys later.